Good morning. morning. He is risen. He is risen. Pretty good. Good morning and welcome into Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter and we welcome you to Longmeadow Church of the Brethren from the other side of the camera today for the sermon titled, We Hold These Truths. Our scripture lesson today is John chapter 16 verses 1 through 15. And I'm reminded that on Easter Sunday, grandparents took their grandchild to church with them that Sunday because they wanted to show off the grandchild in the little Easter suit and everything. And they was coming in. The first time the little the little lad was in church, he'd, he'd never been here before. And Pep Pap was walking him around and showing him all this stuff. And he got to this great big wall of pictures of all these people. And the little lad looked at Pap and said, Who's all them people, Pap Pap? Grandfather, having been a veteran, smiled with pride and dusted himself off and he said, these are all the church members who died during service. And the little kid started to shake and grabbed on to the side of his grandpap and started to get a little sobby and the pap said, what's wrong, what's wrong? And the kid looked at the board and looked at him and goes, which service, pap pap, morning or evening? Uh, we hold these truths. Jesus speaking. All of this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I am going to the one who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief, but I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin. Because men do not believe in me in regard to righteousness. Because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of the world now stands condemned, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you all into truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you only what is yet to come. He will bring glory to Me by taking from what is Mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is Mine. That's why I said the Spirit will take what is Mine and make it known to you. In a little while, you will see me no more. After that little while, you will see me. May God add his blessings to these scriptures as we search him out in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that we are here today celebrating truth, celebrating the resurrection, celebrating that your son Jesus saved us. These words from you, Father, strengthen us through them. Strengthen us through this time spent together and let us go from here and proclaim the gospel always. Bind us together through these words, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of his children everywhere said, Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get something out of the way first. Got it? Oh, good. I am not a suit kind of person. Now, let's talk about truths. Now, everything that comes out of my mouth is the truth. I'm only kidding. You know what I wrote. You know what I was going to say. We get stuck, don't we, sometimes believing something that is said long enough and a long enough period of time, we believe it to be truth. Well, I'm going to read to you five truths. Ready? The first one is, 
The Great Wall of China is the only man-made object you can see from space. No, it is not the only object that you can see from space. But we've always believed it, right? The story about NASA developing a space pen while the Russians only used a pencil because the pen was able to write while they were in space is not true. NASA also had to use pencils. Fisher Pen Company, after the first moon landing, developed the space pen to capitalize on money. Cracking your knuckles will give you arthritis is not true. I love it, man. I wish we could spin that camera around because there's people back there going, Paul, it's trip. My mom's 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 told me, don't you crack your knuckles or they'll just authorize up and they'll get all stiff. Truth of the matter is, what you hear are air bubbles popping that have gotten down in the joint. They will not give you arthritis. And I'm serious about this. I read to make sure I could cite you the scientific information. It's like if you make a face, it won't freeze like that. I make lots of faces. Walt Disney's body is cryogenically frozen on the Disney property. There's people going, yep, yeah. no, it has never been. He's buried in the ground just like everybody else. You see, we get lost in things that we think are truth because we get told them and we get told it so much, that's yeah, true. Now I'm going to read you five things that you have been told that I'm about to tell you that are truths that you won't believe. Are you ready? Say, yep. yep. Apparently you're not ready. <laughs> the Canadians at one time a day wanted to name, rename the Northwest Territories Bob. That's a true story. They wanted to rename the Northwest Territories Bob because they said, and I quote, eh, it's easier to say, eh, Bob? <laughs> if you tried a, variety, a new variety of an apple every day, it would take you 20 years to try them all. That is a true story. Did you know that a humpback whale, everybody knows what a humpback whale is, say, yes, I do. Great big fish, right? Oh, there he goes. My, my, my fish son down there is like, it's a mammal, dude. A humpback whale was found in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Truth. Truth. Here's the truth. At Sotheby's and Christie's auction to decide who would be allowed to auction off a 20 million dollar art collection, the leaders of Christie's and Sotheby's played rock, paper, scissors to decide. <laughs> and finally, did you know that cotton candy was invented by a dentist? I'm only telling you these things because I want you to understand what truth is. We hold these truths even when they aren't correct. We believe things when we're told them. We're, we're believe things like we're told that Twinkies are the only food that will last forever. Now, as much as I want that one to be true, because I mean seriously, you take your Twinkie out, you get your can of whipped cream, you plug it in one of them holes, you add a little extra cream to it, you got your bowl of chocolate syrup, and you... Man, I have got to quit talking about this kind of stuff. They'll only last 25 years. Which is good enough. But we, we, we hear things all the time. And, and sometimes we get caught in, the, in the, the, the nonsense of something that is the truth, and we say there's no way... And then for something that we think is true, it really turns out not to be. We need to center ourselves sometimes. But today, brothers and sisters, today there is one truth that has never changed, never will change, can't be changed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Ooh, 
pretty good. I love you. You're doing good. Back in 1989, in a quote from Today in the Word, in September, as a matter of fact, Dr. George Sweeting tells of an incident of truth in the early 1920s when communist leader Nikolai Bukharin, and I told you this before, was sent from Moscow to Kiev to address an anti-God rally. I want you to understand that story yet again. So powerful was the truth that when that, that, that leader went after everything and was asked what to do, the simple answer was, He is risen. The entire crowd rose to their feet and set it back. Why? Because the truth is that important. And today we read a scripture that is not normally associated with Easter. It's not associated with it at all. And yet when you read that scripture, it is Jesus talking about the truth. He is laying it down step by step. He is telling you, I'm leaving. I'm going away. I have been teaching you and teaching you and teaching you. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. He is laying down the truth that if you would just simply follow Him and believe in Him, regardless of what happens, you will not be lost. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, there is a time coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. Scripture or words spoken almost 2,000 years ago and what happens today. There are people that kill Christians today because they think it is pleasing to God. And yet, he wanted you to understand what the truth is. He says these things they will do to you because they don't know the Father and they don't know me. Don't get lost in this. Remember, there is a time coming. I warned you. He says, I'm going to Him who sent me, yet none of you asks me where are you going because you are filled with grief, because you are sad, because you are not listening. And He explains it to him. When Jesus says, but I tell you the truth, He means it. It is for your good that I am going away. Jesus has to leave. Jesus has to die. He'll rise again in three days and then eventually He will ascend to heaven and begin the preparations to come get us. And yet He is bringing that truth out in John 16 just hours, days before He is crucified. It says when He comes, He will convict the world of its guilt. Up in verse 12, he continues on. There's so much I need to say, but this is more than you can hear, more than you can bear. But when, 13, the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. Truth. We hold these truths. Everybody knows where that comes from, right? Yes? Say amen. Amen. We hold these truths to be what? Self-evident. And it goes into a whole dialogue, a whole monologue, if you will, of why we believe in the truth. In May of 1776, when John Adams was tasked with writing the preamble, because he was part of the driving force for the declaration of this country, he said in his memoirs and to those around him, he wanted it very distinct There is but only truth. Nothing else. Truth is what keeps us from going off into a land where we don't belong. The truth of the matter was at that moment they were under tyranny. The truth of the matter was at that moment that even Christianity, that even God and the belief therein was being attacked because the the colonies were banding together. And the king of England at that time saw religion saw the belief in God and Jesus Christ as what would be the separation point from England. We hold these truths. 
That's what it is today, isn't it? Brothers and sisters, today is Truth Day. Linda said in her prayer this morning, the word again. I ought to preach a sermon on that word. I ought to do that, but the truth of the matter is, again, this doesn't stop in the next three or four hours when I get done preaching and we all leave here. And that's the truth. <laughs> now, Greg just made a cut sign like that, <laughs> like there's not enough tape in the camera. I don't know. When we leave this building, Easter doesn't stop walking out that door. It's not about Easter lunch or, or the ham or the whatever that's going on afterwards. Today is the day of truth. Today, it has to be carried through. It is truth day. And we need to repeat it again and again and again and again. I've told you the old story about a brand new preacher at a church that got up one Sunday morning and preached a sermon. Everybody just, oh, that was a wonderful sermon going at you. did wonderful. Oh, you were just the most beautiful person in the world. The next Sunday, he got up and preached the same sermon again. And they walked past him. Oh, that was pretty good, preacher. You did a real good job. The deacon started to get a little bit nervous. The next Sunday, he got up and preached the same sermon again. And the deacons caught him and said, Hey, you, you, you preached the same Sunday three times in a row. That's right. Don't do that again. The next Sunday, the, the preacher got up and preached the same sermon. And they stood up in the middle of it. And they said, Stop! Why do you keep preaching the same sermon? You can't do that. And the preacher looked at him and said, I'll stop when you can tell me what I said to start with. <laughs> I will never stop preaching again and again and again the story. We sing that hymn. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory. And the story of the day is the one that I'm, I, I just never can get through it. John chapter 20. Go ahead, get your Bibles open. Let's follow along. John chapter 20. In the first verse, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and she saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. I read this this morning in sunrise and I'm going to read it again. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put Him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked in at the strips of linen lined there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. He still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. We hold this truth. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the foot, or one at the head, and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me 
for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them the things he had said to her. She had believed, but now she knew. She had wanted it, and now she had it. The truth had been made real. All the words that Jesus had spoken, I am going to die, and I am going to rise again. This temple is going to be destroyed, and in three days it will come back. We're now real. We hold these truths. Why? Because what else do we have to cling to? You certainly cannot cling to me. You can't cling to your best friend. You can't cling to that fancy new car you're looking at getting. You can't cling to anything in this world that will give you truth, honesty, and will show you what joy for all eternity is except for Jesus Christ the Lord and it was made real today. As Vice President George Bush when he was representing the United States at the funeral of the former Soviet leader, Leonid Brezhnev, Bush found himself moved by a silent protest carried out by Brezhnev's widow. She stood motionless by the coffin until seconds before it was clapped shut. And just as soldiers touched the lid, she stepped forward, leaned in, and performed an act of great hope Courage, a gesture that must be one of the most profound acts of civil disobedience ever committed in the USSR. She reached down and made the sign of the cross on her husband's chest. There in the citadel of secular atheistic power, the wife of the man who had run it all hoped that her husband was wrong. She hoped that there was truth. She hoped that there was yet another life best represented by Jesus who died on the cross. And that same Jesus might yet have mercy on her husband. Friday night, we told the story of the three trees. Many of you were here to be a part of that. And we ended it openly. We didn't close a loop. We never heard what the third tree saw, did we? I'd like to invite the third tree up to talk to us. Then came the day sunlight poured into my dark shed. I thought the time had come for my greatness and strength to be revealed. Men came in laughing and joking and felt my shame would be over as I would be put to the greatest use of all mankind. I was shaped into something called a cross, and carried from the darkness into crowd to please them, I thought. Through the streets as the people mocked the man who was carrying me, he wore thorns made into a crown and a robe, and was badly bruised and bleeding. People spat on him and jeered him. He struggled to carry me, but never, never made a sound of hatred against them. Who was this man? He came to a stop, we came to a stop, on top of a small hill, and onto my wood I was nailed. He, they nailed to me. Then they raised it into the air between the other crosses with common thieves, and people called him the king of the Jews. They beat him, mocked him, and then as king... This king screamed out in agony and died. The earth roared beneath and the thunder cracked the sky above me and I shook. Was this it? I was to become great and everyone was to look to me and revere me. Why was I here? And who was this man who bled and died against me? My shame was greater than I had ever known. I was back in the dark room. Why? I was the third tree, and I watched as they took him down and sent him to the tomb. I watched for as the days passed, 
But this morning, this morning, tomb opened and the man walked out. I saw it and the man turned and looked at me and smiled. Then I knew and understood my purpose. He is the king of kings and I now know the truth. My purpose is to never let this truth fall away. My blood soaked wood shall always be a reminder God said he would save and he Jesus his son did. He is risen. John of Damascus wrote these words, the day of resurrection, earth tell it abroad, the Passover of gladness, the Passover of God, from death to life eternal, from this world to the sky. Our Christ has brought over us over with hymns of victory. Now let the heavens be joyful, let earth her song begin, let the world round keep triumph and all that is therein. Let all things seen and unseen, their notes and gladness blend. For Christ the Lord has risen. Our joy today forever will have no end. We hold these truths. That Jesus died, rose, lives again, and through him we are saved. He is risen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us this time together. Thank you for these words. Remind us, Father, that this is the greatest truth ever. All things fall away. And as we mull this time together, as we reflect on it, let the Holy Spirit work its magic within us, resounding that truth and that song, reminding us to never go astray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for these blessings. Thank you for Easter. He is risen, Father, because you saw for it. You sent him for it. You let him pay for it. And you welcomed him home after it. And one day, we will be with you where we may sing this joy forever. Thank you for that truth, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a particular need as we close up, the bench is open. And on the other side of the camera, you know the drill. We are ready to help you come to know our Jesus. May God bless and keep you this Easter Sunday.
because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he Because he lives, Father. Thank you. On this day of all days, we rejoice in being together with you. And now as we depart from here, Father, watch over and keep us. In Jesus' name, in the Holy Spirit's name, in your name, now and forever. Amen.